say I was slightly horrified to hear that Ramadan is being promoted instead. I do think that we we are culturally a Christian country. I'm, I call myself a cultural Christian. I'm, I'm not a believer. Hey guys, welcome to Barium Babs. I'm your host, Vali Chikuni. We begin. Richard Dawkins. Richard Dawkins is now calling himself that he's a cultural Christian. He's now a cultural Christian. <laughs> Well, let's hear him in his own words. Okay, so for those of you who might not be familiar with uh, Professor Richard Dawkins, he's a well-known atheist. So this time around, he's telling us that he does believe that he's a cultural Christian. He wants the fruit, but he doesn't want the tree. So let's hear him in his own words how uh, how he how is how how he's making all this work. Okay. So let's listen in. Say, so I was slightly horrified to hear that Ramadan is being promoted instead. I do think that we we are culturally a Christian country. I'm, I call myself a cultural Christian. I'm, I'm not a believer. But there's a distinction between being a believing Christian and being a cultural Christian. And so, you know, I, I love hymns and Christmas carols. And um, I I sort of feel at home in the Christian ethos. I feel that we are a Christian country in that sense. Uh, it's true that statistically the number of people who actually believe in Christianity is going down, uh, and I, I'm happy with that. But I would not be happy if, um, for example, we lost all our cathedrals and our beautiful parish churches. Um, so I, I count myself a cultural Christian. I think it would matter if we... Certainly, if we substituted any alternative religion, that would be tr truly dreadful. But which brings um, me to, to my supplementary point, which is that... As we know, church attendance is plummeting, but the building, the erection of mosques across Europe, I think 6,000 are under construction and there are many more, I mean, are being planned. So do you think, do you regard that as a problem? Do you think that matters? Christianity is going down, even Christianity is... So before the professor gives us an answer to the, uh, the question about the mosque, right? Christian, uh, Professor Dawkins is an atheist. The question to ask him is just, so what? So what? Why do you care that the Christian things should continue? For what reason? You see what I'm saying? So this, he just demonstrates, yes, even though he's deny, he denies God, even though that he thinks that he's an atheist, he is not. Why? Because God has revealed himself to everybody. Everybody knows that God exists. What they do, they just suppress the knowledge of who God is. How do we know that? Is the thing that he's saying. Richard Dawkins is making a distinction that he would rather have cathedrals, sing Christmas carols, sing Christmas hymns, rather than <laughs> rather than the mosque, right? Rather than people celebrating Ramadan. He can make that distinction. By what standard, Professor Dawkins? So what does it matter? <laughs> So you can see that, yes, I do, but he is correct in what he's saying, that, no, I'm not a believer. He's making a distinction, yes. There is a distinction between a believer and a cultural Christian, for sure. But be that as it may, even him being an atheist, <laughs> to say that he's a cultural Christian, okay, you know what I mean? He's moving closer. <laughs> he's moving closer. He's made similar statements before. Uh, so this is the type of person who just wants uh, to eat the fruit, but he just doesn't want the tree, right? He doesn't want the tree where, you know, where does this Christianity come from? He doesn't want all of that. He just wants the benefits of it. So uh, let's hear to what, what his response is when uh, he was given an, a question about the mosque. Is going down, uh, and I, I'm happy with that. But I would not be happy if, um, for example, we lost all our cathedrals and our beautiful parish churches. Um, so I, I've count myself a cultural Christian, I think it would matter if we, certainly if we substituted any alternative religion, that would be tr truly dreadful. Well, which brings um, me to, to my supplementary point, which is that, as we know, church attendance is plummeting, but the building, the erection of mosques across Europe, I think 6,000 are under construction, and there are many more, I mean, are being planned. So do you think, do you regard that as a problem? Do you think that matters? Yes, I do really. I mean, I, 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 I don't. I, I have to choose my words carefully. I mean, I, if I had to choose between Christianity and Islam, I choose Christianity every single time. I mean, it seems to me to be a, a fundamentally decent religion. 
um, in a way that I think Islam is not. I think you're going to have to explain why you say that, Professor Dawkins. Why is Islam fundamentally not decent like Christianity? Yes, I mean, the, 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 the way women are treated. I mean, Christianity is not great about that. For, uh, it's had its problems with female vicars and female bishops and things. But there's an active hostility to women, which is promoted, I think, by the holy books of Islam. I'm not talking about individual Muslims, who, of course, are... are Quite, quite different, but the but the doctrines of Islam, the Hadith and the and the Quran, is fundamentally um, hostile to women, hostile to gays, um, and uh, I find that I like to live in a culturally Christian country, although I do not believe a single word of the Christian faith. <laughs> That is funny. That is funny. He does not believe in a way about the Christian faith, but he would like to live in a Christian country. Okay? Hashtag Christian nationalism. So, they, you, do you see the example that he actually gave, right? Like even what he said, like, oh, uh, Christianity is even not even good when it comes to women in terms of um, women bishop, um, women vi uh, vicars, things of that nature. No. Christianity is the only religion that does that does value women. That's the only religion that does value women to the core. Not only that, the reason why women are not bishops, it's because that is not the role that God has designed for women to be. Uh, that role has been designated to men because of male headship. That's a creation order. That's how God has designed things for women not to hold that office, nor for women to participate in that way. So women not being bishops, we are just um, obeying what God has already instructed us. Those who are doing it, they are in disobedience. They need to stop. Not only that, he actually says like, yes, the things that are written in Hadith, in Quran, uh, Europe, is, uh, especially London, Islam has taken over London. You can hear call prayers in London. They have taken over. So this is also another yet another distinction when it comes to the ideology, when it comes to the religions, right? Because the Quran, their, um, what is their stance, right? It's just like, okay, Allah wrote the book, okay? Uh, Allah is the author of the Quran. Christians, what do you say? It says like, you know, the scriptures were written by God himself, right? This is God-breathed word. So if the Quran is written by God and the Bible is written by God, so how come these books are in contradiction? The law of non-contradiction, either both things are true or both things are wrong, but they cannot be true and wrong at the same time. You see what I'm saying? So when you put the Quran to the test, when you put the Bible to the test, the scripture, the Bible withstands all the tests that you put it through. Why? Because it is actually the true word of God. It is actually the true word of God. So even somebody as, uh, as an atheist like Richard Dawkins can actually see that mm -mm, this book promotes this, okay? This book promotes violence. This book does not promote violence. This book does not value women. This book does value women. So even him, he can see that. Why? He's created in the image of God. He's able to see right and wrong. So he's just, you know, you're not too far from the kingdom, uh, Professor Dawkins, okay? I'll call for you to repent. Repent and believe the gospel. So this is a clip of uh, um, Dawkins, okay, when he was debating uh, Professor Lennox. They've debated for quite some time, okay? So hear him, the way he just denounces the existence of God. Here we go. Paul, that which is a sort of uh, poetic metaphor for the mystery, that which we don't understand about the universe. We could take a deist God, a sort of God of the physicists, a God of somebody like Paul Davies, who devised the laws of physics, God the mathematician, uh, God who put together the cosmos in the first place and then sat back and watched everything happen. Uh, and that would be, a, the deist God would be one that I think it would be, one could make a reasonably respectable case for that, not a case that I would um, accept, but I think it is a serious discussion that we could have. The third kind of God is one of which there are thousands and thousands of varieties, Zeus and Thor and Apollo and Amun-Ra and Yahweh. And uh, we don't actually need to go through all those because I've, um, as Larry has said, I've encountered Don Lennox before and I know what he, the, the God he believes in, which is the Christian God. So we only have to talk about the Christian God. John Lennox is a scientist who believes that Jesus turned water into wine. 
a scientist who believes that Jesus somehow influenced all those molecules of H2O and introduced proteins and carbohydrates and tannins and, and alcohol and turned it into wine. He believes that Jesus walked on water. I had been accustomed to debating with sophisticated theologians and I come across John Lennox who is a scientist who believes in all those things. In particular, he believes that the creator of the universe, the God who devised the laws of physics, the laws of mathematics, the physical constants, who devised the parsecs of space, billions of light years of space, billions of years of time, that this paragon of physical science, this genius of mathematics, couldn't think of a better way to rid the world of sin than to come to this little speck of cosmic dust and have himself tortured and executed so that he could forgive himself. That is profoundly unscientific. Not only is it unscientific, it doesn't do justice to the grandeur of the universe. It's petty and small-minded. And that's the God that John Lennox believes in. <laughs> but, uh, Professor Dawkins, yes, that is the God that uh, John Le Lennox believes in. And did you see what he said? Like, you know, what about justice? On what basis? On what grounds can you invoke justice if you're an atheist? By what standard? So everything that he has to even bring up in order for him to prove his case, guess what? He has to steal from God because he cannot escape it. <laughs> as long as you're a human being, you cannot escape it while you are created in the image of God. He's invoking justice. By what standard? So it's just so funny when they say these things because according to him, he cannot understand it. Yes, that's precisely the point. That's how people do believe that, yes, Jesus is God. Because who can turn water into wine? Okay? The, ex the creator himself. Who created wine? <laughs> who created water? Yeah, I need it. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, we serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. Yes, Jesus did walk on water. <laughs> that's, the pro that's the issue. Like, wait a minute. Because who can walk on water? You can't walk on water, right? So if you have somebody who is walking on water, he's just suspending all the laws of nature that would just it's mind-blowing i get it but that's the god that we see okay what a mighty god we see so yes man richard Dawkins, bow the knee bow the knee so you can come to understanding and according to him uh, professor lennox is a triple doctorate uh his professor his friends they don't understand they think like you are this brilliant how can you be how can you be, how can you put your faith in, uh, in Jesus? They don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. But you don't have science without God. God is the author of science. But they don't believe in those things. They don't believe in those things. So here's the scripture, okay? Because God has already spoken. This is where Dawkins is at. Right? Romans 1, 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their un unrighteousness suppress the truth that's what uh richard dawkins is doing all he's doing he's suppressing the truth he knows it he's just suppressing it that's why now he's coming out telling us as a cultural christian for what can be known about god is plain to them because god has shown it to them for his invisible attributes namely his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. That's it. That's it. God has revealed himself in creation, in our conscience, and through his word. So if you don't have access to the scriptures, guess what? You, you, you're seeing, you live in creation, right? You can see the sun, you can see the moon. You, you know, you, you are participating um, in the laws of nature. You are a moral human being and you have a conscience in you. That's how God has revealed you, himself to you. So you might say, oh, I never read the Bible. Well, but creation testify that God exists. Your conscience bears witness to that, right? So then you have the Bible, you add a verse. So these are, yeah, that's how God has revealed himself, okay? In three ways. Through his word, through nature, and through your conscience. Okay, not only with his word, we have the scriptures, right? He revealed himself through his son, Jesus Christ. The one that Richard Dawkins is what? Is denying. Hello, welcome to Christianity, Professor Dawkins. So I thought that was very interesting. Okay, like, oh, he would prefer <laughs> the Christian ethos. Okay, but why do you prefer that? 
what, why are you choosing that over everything else? By what standards? And so what? So I thought that is uh, interesting. Okay, so we have Richard Dawkins. Okay, the one of the four horsemen is now a cultural Christian. Okay, not too far from the kingdom. But what do you guys think about what Professor Dawkins just said? I'm interested to know what you guys think. All right, guys, that is all that I had for you guys today. I hope you find this to be informative to you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Stay tuned. More coming this week. Until next time, remember to be in the know. Thank you.